Good afternoon. I'm Linda Levy, president of the Fragrance Foundation in the USA. Welcome to the thousands of people around the globe today who are joining us at the Fragrance Foundation Masterclass. We thank our sponsors for this event, who are the Estee Lauder Companies, Fermanish, Givadon, and IFF. These three fragrance houses are not just sponsors in the typical sense of event sponsorship. All three, Fermanish, Givadon, and IFF, are major lifetime friends and partners to Leonard Lauder and the Estee Lauder companies. So we are very proud to feature the leaders of these three fragrance houses in this masterclass event, and each of them will pose their own specific question to Mr. Lauder himself. The masterclass is a hallmark event at the Fragrance Foundation. It's tied to two major objectives that guide our organization, nurturing talent and fragrance education. For several years and continuing in 2021, our Notables event takes place in February, where we recognize the up and coming fragrance professionals who are future leaders in the fragrance business. We have included questions directly from a few of the Fragrance Foundation Notables from the past few years. So for this next hour, I am so honored to be having a conversation with the one and only Leonard Lauder. He is Chairman Emeritus and former CEO of the Estee Lauder Companies. However, it will be extremely evident why Mr. Lauder is also known as the Chief Teaching Officer within his company and by all of those who have had the opportunity to know him. One month ago, Leonard Lauder published his book, The Company I Keep, where he shares his legendary story in the beauty business and the world beyond. As of today, there have been many interviews and articles exploring the varied aspects of this very personal story. While the book includes all the aspects of his personal and professional life with highlights of his contributions to the world of art, culture, philanthropy, and more, our focus today is fragrance and life lessons. One last personal note. I have been in the beauty business for 30 years. And for those who know me, we met while I was either at the Estee Lauder companies for 10 years, or when I was at L'Oreal, Shiseido, Wella, P&G, Cody, or Macy's, or maybe I even met you when I was at the Fragrance Foundation in the last few years. Throughout these varied roles, I have been connected to the Lauder family and companies as either an employee, a retailer, and always an active supporter in both the Breast Cancer Research Foundation and ADDF. The Lauder family has been connected to the Fragrance Foundation throughout its history as important members in addition to some very special honors. Estee Lauder herself was the first recipient of the Hall of Fame Award at the Fragrance Foundation Awards in 1974. In 1990, Leonard Lauder was inducted into the Hall of Fame. In the year 2000, Leonard Lauder was the first to enter the circle of champions. And in 2006, Evelyn Lauder into the Hall of Fame. So today together and always, we're actually one big family who are united in our passion for fragrance. So let me now introduce the man who always says yes to speaking about his passion of fragrance. I welcome Mr. Leonard Lauder, and I'm sorry we can't be sitting together in the same room for this conversation, but the good news is we have thousands sitting in at varied locations who are with us today around the globe. So Mr. Lauder, your story is so inspiring. And at this time in 2020, a journey of inspiration is so valuable and appreciated. So we'd love for you to tell us what learnings you can share from the early days of when the Estee Lauder brand started, which was during the depression and following a devastating world war. And people are really resonating with your inspiration. So can you tell us about that time versus this time? Okay. Uh... 
I, I first uh, saw my mother in action sitting in a high chair <laughs> and uh, in the kitchen. And so while she uh, mixed the creams, I drank my milk. In order to keep me drinking my milk, she would drop a chocolate kiss into it. So I had to finish the glass of milk before I got, uh, before I got the chocolate. But what I learned from those early years with her is the idea of dedication. If you want to make it, you have to keep your eye on the future and keep going. You, you can't say, oh, I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, it, she, uh, my, my parents worked together for many years, but the first 20 years were very tough. 20 years, mm. and, but she got started at the, during the depression. And by the way, we are in something like that today. Yes. So many of you who are listening to this can get started or can do it in the depression. However, what I'm gonna to talk to you also, if you want to hear it later on, is what do you do with your future? How can you find where your future is without looking into a crystal ball. That's very, very good. In fact, um, it's Nicholas Verzianz who at the end of his little uh, video is going to ask this question. Good afternoon, Linda. Good afternoon, Leonard. And to, hello to all of you that are with us this afternoon. And I hope that you're all well and safe. What a wonderful way to end this year together this afternoon. I'm deeply grateful to have been working with you, Leonard, for nearly 30 years and to have grown and to learn by your side. For me, you are a mentor and a friend. The partnership of the Estelar companies and AFF began close to 70 years ago and together we have created the prestige American fragrance business. Out of this long-standing symbiotic partnership came some of the most iconic fragrances. And I think that we should all be showering in happy and beautiful in these times. Lerner, thank you for your leadership. You are and will forever be our industry guiding force and our spiritual leader. We love and respect you because you are inspirational, instinctive, visionary, deeply human, generous of your time and ideas. You were thinking globally before any of us did. This has kept you ahead of the curves for many decades, challenging us to create and to define the future outside of the box. I remember one of the most important lessons I learned while seated next to you in 2009. It was a very challenging time for the industry. And you shared with me the words of Winston Churchill, never waste a good crisis. I've used it a lot of times. And in the current environment, more than ever before, I've remembered your words of wisdom and encouragement many times, and it has empowered me to find the hope and new innovative solutions. I always loved the Estelotter motto, bringing the best to everyone you touch. But I felt that you took it to a next level by bringing the best in everyone you touch and you've been able to do this extremely well. You are, after all, our chief teaching officer because of your belief and practice that the wealth of a company is its people. And we all know it's never business as usual with you. This year, 2020, as the world is on pause, you bring light into everyone's experience by releasing your book. In reading it, I heard your voice. I could see you telling me the story, the stories, as if you were sitting in front of me. Your book 
is a beautifully crafted page turner of your family and company stories and business acumen and strategic insights. Thank you for sharing your love of life, your love of people, and your passion for business, art, beauty, and fragrances. For your business growth and humanity go hand in hand. Thankfully, your life and business lessons are now accessible to everyone. What a gift. It can be a guide for people who are working in the beauty industry today and for anyone starting to build a company on their own. But I must share with you that I recently appointed myself chairman of the Leonard Lauder Fan Club. There was a lot of competition for this position. It is a very large global club, and thanks to your new book, it is rapidly expanding. Now, my question to you. What do you think the future of fragrances is? And what role do you think fragrances can play in helping people reconnect with themselves in this moment of anxiety? Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you look back in history, and uh, and those people who excavated the the tombs in Egypt, fragrance goes back thousands of years, and it will continue for the next thousands of years, because fragrance is tied in, in completely and absolutely with the human instinct to reproduce, <laughs> and so that. Uh, what many people may or may not realize is that in your nostrils, your nostrils have a way of sensing where you want to love. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can, uh, you would all remember Napoleon, whose wife was named Josephine. And Napoleon sent, her, sent word to her saying, I'm coming back to Paris. We'll be there tomorrow. Don't bathe before I come. Okay. Now I can't. I can't say to you that that's the way all fragrances should smell. But understand this: it's a natural instinct in the human being to smell a woman or to smell a, a, a man. It's natural. It's not unnatural. It's natural. So it will be here for all of our lifetime in the future. That's a good one. At the beginning of the book, it talks about what really was the creation of the American fragrance business with Estee Lauder and Youth Do. And everyone really wants to hear that story and we can't hear it enough. So would you be so kind as to share with us how Estee Lauder came up with the idea for Youth Do? Okay. Uh... The, the beginning of, of Estee Lauder, one of the first things, the first creams that she created was something called Estoderm Youth Do Cream. Mm -hmm. Youth Do was the, was the promise. And, uh, and so that it was a brand extension from Estoderm Cream uh, to Estoderm Youth Do Fragrance. She then decided along the way, very early in the, in the game, that no, she didn't want to have it be a treatment product. It was going to be a fragrance product. And uh, it was going to be a bath oil that doubled as a skin perfume. That was, that was her twofer. And, uh, and, and that, was, that was the start. Wow. Then a little decision, which was to me a great decision. Every fine fragrance in those days was wrapped up in cellophane. Hmm. If a woman got a lesson present, she had to break the cellophane wrap. Many of them wouldn't want to do that. However, youth do came in a box with no cello wrap. Oh, wow. And so you could get it, open it up. Ah, oh, that smells good. And the third thing was this, that early on in the launch of the company, they wanted to advertise. And they went to some big advertising agency. I think it was VBDNO, but I'm not so sure. They said they had $50,000 to advertise. That, that was like 
a tiny rounding error if the BBDNO. They said, sorry, we can't take it. So what they do, they didn't say, that's the end of our business. They said, sample it. Then, this is something that happened to me. Uh, I reported for duty, if, if you want to call it that, after I got discharged from the US Navy. Mm -hmm. And I started in February, uh, in February uh, of, of 1956, okay? Yeah, anyway, uh, I was sitting in the office. The office was about the size of this pad here. <laughs> and there, and they announced that the cosmetic buyer of Neiman Marcus, Alvin Plant was there. Mm -hmm. And he came in to see me. He said, you know, you have a product. It's called Youth Through Bath Oil. Every time we sample it, people come back and buy it. So uh, there's a key thing we like to say, listen to your customer. And so I took all the money we had and made 50,000 samples of Youth Through Bath Oil, distributed it to the few key stores we had, and the rest was history. But your, your, your members should understand this. Yes. If they, really, if they really want to succeed in sampling, sample the way you sell it. Too often, you sell everything in a spray bottle, mm -hmm. but it's cheaper to sample it in a, in a vial on card with no spray. Don't let, the, don't let the bean counters talk you out of success. Okay. Yeah. If, if, because as you know, a fragrance smells differently when it comes out of a spray than if, if it's a pour. Sampling is very important to experience right. and fall in love with it. I think the other thing that was really interesting to me when I read the book, because um, I didn't know exactly how it happened, was that Estee Lauder really was able to convert women from thinking that fragrance was a luxury, was always going to be French. And instead, you know, it sounded like both of your parents were on a mission to make sure that people thought of using fragrance as they do a lipstick. That's a right. big conversion of the population at the time, I would think. What did that feel like back then? What did it feel like? Yeah, yeah it felt uh, terrific. Look, <laughs> here's what we did. Uh, the, the largest single selling item at that time was something called a bath oil and soap combination. It was a little box, but that mm -hmm. large, with a little bottle of youth to bath oil and a small guest soap. We sold it for $2.50. And at Christmas, we said, buy them by the dozen. We sold out again and again and again and again. We had paid, basically, the customer paid for the sample. Mm. And it was fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And there was no looking back. Wow. And another thing I think we can totally um, say was Estee Lauder's idea was this idea of the fragrance wardrobe, not just having a signature scent, but wearing multiple scents or right. wearing them on different occasions. So what's the story behind that one? Well, we started off with you two. Mm -hmm. And then the first fragrance after that was Alliage, the sports fragrance. And it had a fresh green smell to it. It was fabulous. And then followed by that was called Esty. So we kept on changing and launching new fragrances. Uh, each one different, but each one had a particular cachet. But it was a step from youth do to Alliage, a, a sports fragrance. Wow. And what was the story behind Beautiful, which is one of the biggest fragrances for brides? And it's a special occasion or an everyday? Well, uh, my mother was working on the fragrance and she was starting to have problems with her, with her smell. So she called up my wife, Evelyn. She said, mm -hmm. Evie, you have to help me. I can't smell anymore. So Evelyn Lauder finished the fragrance uh, for, uh, 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 beautiful. Then the great inspiration came from Alvin Shereskin, our advertising agency, and June Lee with the, our creative director, that we introduced the bride. Mm. And the bride 
did it. And uh, now, please, members of the Fragrance Foundation, please. Many of you are women, some are men. Women, trust your instinct. Do not trust the men. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. I'll tell you why. Because the guys here said, okay, we, can, we have to change that because brides are old fashioned. Brides are not old fashioned. Brides are still around. And, uh, and, and women like being a bride. Every woman I know likes being a bride. So we chose that and we kept going with that. I would also think if a woman wears beautiful on the day that she gets married, it's going to be with her the rest of her life in some special way. Absolutely, absolutely. But that leads us into the family story. Um, you always talk about the people in the company being part of your family and it's a very large family. And your father's quote I loved, which is, we are more than a business now, we are a family in business. So what is it like to be working with your immediate family and how do you approach all the employees as if they're part of your family? Well, there are two aspects here. Mm -hmm. uh, each one of the members of our family are, have, have their own separate responsibilities. It's not that everything is decided in a family way because you can't get anything done if, if, it's, if, it's, if, if, it's, if it's a joint decision. So uh, when I was a CEO, I made the decisions. That's it, I made the decisions. And, and later on, subsequently, the other CEOs, uh, made, they made the decision. But the family that had their name, what's that mean is that we are here for the long run. Mm -hmm. So uh, a number of years ago, a friend of mine who, who was in our world, in the fashion world, was trying to convince me to have him help us go and, and sell a, a, lot of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of discounted goods. Mm -hmm. I said, it would kill our brand. He said, Leonard, it takes a long time to kill a brand. Never, never, yeah, never. If you have a brand, you protect the brand forever. I understand that. We have a good question from a notable related to this. Um, there's a young lady named Ashley Hamilton who works for Ann Gottlieb Associates and you know Ann. She's a project manager there. And her question to you, Mr. Lauder, is what do you find has been the most challenging part about working with family members? I don't find much many challenges because I love working with my family. Uh, but one challenge can, came along uh, when we had a family meal. Mm -hmm. And one of the people at the table, who shall remain nameless, <laughs> pulled up a bottle and said, look, I know you've chosen the bottle for, for your nail polish, but this is a bottle I think that will look better with, uh, with our products. I said, I've already made the decision. Thank you very much but I will not change the decision. And that's it. that's it, I'm sticking to it. Thank you very much. That's the last time we had a, discuss, a Monday morning, the quarterback meeting to discuss the decision. Once I made the decision, I stuck by it because it was my neck. If it worked, good for me. If it, if it didn't work, I'm the one at fault, not someone else. I think that's great advice. I also think when you start bringing up business, when you're having a meal with your family, it changes the whole dynamic from the enjoyment of what that family Absolutely, yeah. Here's another question from a notable about family. Um, this is from Alisar Tarami, who works at the Fragrance Foundation. She's our marketing director. And she says, in your book, you talk a lot about the importance of family within your business and personally raising your children. What is your advice for new parents working on advancing their careers while raising children? And how did you strike a balance as a leader while wearing multiple hats? I know well, Alisar, she had a little baby boy in August. So this really touches her heart. Okay. 
uh, once we started having children, the deal was eat breakfast together in the morning, of course, and dinner together always at night. And at night, there was storytelling, mm. hugs and kisses in bed, so that we, we got them when they woke up, we got them when they went, went to sleep. And it was very hard for me, if I went on a business trip, to miss my children getting up in the morning or putting them to bed at night. But there's nothing more delicious than, than, than a little child in, 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 in their pajamas. Ah, it's cuddly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in the same um, area about family and the future, Patrick Furmanish, who I know you know very well, had a question for you, sir, and that was... Dear Linda, dear Leonard, I would have loved to be with you today, but unfortunately, the current pandemic situation does not allow it. And I'm not even yet entitled to enter the United States. I have therefore to use digital mean to be with you today. Leonard, we go back a long time. I think it has been about 30 years that Valentine and I met you when we first arrived in New York. You have always been wonderful to us and your story, and in particular your book, which I've just been able to read, are truly inspiring. Indeed, you have always been an inspiration for many, and for me in particular, in business, in beauty, and of course in fragrances. And mostly, I'm honored to call you a friend. Estee Lauder and Fermanish are both family companies. We both share a true passion for creativity, quality, innovation, and success. And you and I, like William, as well as your other family members, we try day after day to be the guardian of our values, history, and legacy. It's something rare and precious today, as there are a few companies like ours that make it over generation. Our two companies share a long history of collaboration, starting with knowing in the 80s. More personally, I started my journey with you, your beloved wife, Evelyn, Karen Curry, and our master perfumer, Annie Byzantian and Alberto Morias, on your blockbuster fragrance, Pleasure. Since then, we continued to create beautiful perfumes together. It has been indeed an honor to work for your incredible brands, including Estee Lauder, Aramis, Clinique, Tommy Hilfiger, Michael Kors, Joe Malone, by Kilian and Le Labo, as well as with your niece, Erin's wonderful fragrances. Leonard, we also share a common vision for success in luxury fragrances. We are both setting science-based sustainability targets across sourcing, efficiency, products, and packaging. And we are both proud to be operating on 100% renewable and electricity. And most importantly, we are living with a purpose, to do good and to do it well, setting an example for inclusion and positive impact. A very tangible example of that is the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which Evelyn founded in 1993, and that we are proud to support year after year. Leonard, I'd like to thank you for your friendship, your guidance, and our special collaboration. On behalf of Gilbert, Ilaria, Jerry, and myself, and of course, in the name of our fabulous perfumer and all of the Fermanish team, I would like to thank you for the opportunities to continue to forge the future together. Before I go, I also have a question for you. How have you been able to ensure the tremendous legacy of Estee Lauder? How are you able to inspire generation after generation to help Lauder reinvest itself and reinvent your future day after day? These are certainly questions that would inspire me also. Leonard, please stay safe, please stay well, and I hope I'll be able to see you once the pandemic is behind us. One of the things that we do is uh, with, within the family, we talk about the challenges and the opportunities, but we never, ever, ever quarrel. And I am the peacemaker. And the rule of thumb is no, 
if there's a leader of the family, if, if that person has become the chairman, as William is daughter is now, or the CEO, or as I was, et cetera, you let the person who's in charge do what he or she has to do. You do not have mon Monday morning quarterbacking or sniping. Yeah. And we are totally cohesive in that, totally. It shows. Okay, in your book, it's funny, when I was reading the book, every time I found something that I thought I really wanted to remember as a lesson, I put a little post-it in. And by the time I got to the very end of the book, you know, I had a gazillion post-its, but I was very grateful because you summarized life lessons at the end. Yeah. So there are a lot of these life lessons we really want to talk about today. The first one, which we all adore, is never make an important decision without a woman at the table. Okay. Tell us about that, please. Okay, now listen, please. Because we're in the cosmetic business or fragrance business doesn't mean that all the people who are working at that should be women. It's simply not the product. Women's brains are different than men's brains. Remember that you don't have the same brains. And that if I, I, I spent three and a half years in the military, as an officer in the military. Okay. If I, if I had to, uh, I, if I had to take that hill up there, I would say to the, to the captain or whoever, take that hill. And mm -hmm. he would run up and take the hill or get shot. The woman would say, why should we run up that hill and get <laughs> shot? Let's think about it. Let's go around the back or let's do it in, in disguise. So let's do it at night. There's always a woman who has a different way of looking at things. Wow. And pay attention to her. Listen to her. God gave you two ears to listen. If God wanted you to talk more than you listen, he or she would have given you two mouths. You have two ears, listen to the woman. That's what I did. Wow. Here's a question from a notable. Um, her name is Anais Nouvet from Cartier. She's the fragrance director. And she said, Mr. Lauder, congratulations on your astonishing and inspiring career. As we always learn a lot from making mistakes, could you share some of the mistakes you've made either in your career, earlier in your career, and what you've learned from them? Uh, without going into all the details. <laughs> Just okay. one mistake. Uh, probably the most uh, consistently bad mistake that I've had was when I was a CEO and some, uh, or the chairman, executive chairman, there's something I wanted to do. And someone said, don't do it. And I let myself be talked out of it. I regretted that. Hmm. Your heart knows often what your head can barely comprehend. Wow. Listen, listen to your heart and go for it. I, the only times I feel that I made bad decisions is when I hesitated before hmm. making the right decision. Wow, that's great advice. Um, another notable, uh, Dora Gaffney from Parlux, she's the Senior Director of Global Marketing and Brand Development said, Mr. Lauder, you have paved the way for so many beauty enthusiasts and executives to not only lead with passion, but also by example. What is the most important advice you would give these leaders and aspiring leaders? Well, there's a lot of advice and a lot of us carried in, in, in the book, either in the body of the book or the back. Uh, that's decision making. The wrong decision is far better than no decision. Always make a decision. Be decisive. If you are decisive, people will follow you. If you are indecisive and talk about it and let's review it, about blah, 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 you will never get anywhere. Be, make a decision and make the decision swiftly and with conviction. That is great. Another one I loved in your life lessons was it's my neck. <laughs> Talk about accountability and apologize when you're wrong. Yeah. 
So do you have an example of that? Well, or that you... comes from way back when uh, one of the uh, first major ads that we ran was when we were launching our, uh, our evening makeup collection. And uh, we had this beautiful double page spread ad and, I, and it was in, in our creative department. And there were five people in there. I had five different opinions, okay? And so I carried the, the ad home with me in a big manila envelope. And when I came home, uh, we were living in the country then for the, for the summertime. Uh, my, my wife, Evelyn, was, was, was around somewhere, but I took the, I took the folder mm -hmm. and I put it into the closet. She said, what's in the folder? Mm -hmm. I said, something I'm working on. I had brought it up there to show it to her. But then I said to myself, I don't care what she says. If it's, it's my neck, I'm the one who is the CEO. I'm the accountable one. And if it's bad, I can't say Evelyn might be doing. If it's my neck, stick by it. So accountability it's probably one of the key things you have to remember in, in business. That's, that's a really good one. Here's one that I know you're all about because I know the van trip stories and I know <laughs> the Vassar stories and you're so fabulous with the teams and really relating to them. And this is one of my faves. One of your life lessons in the book is give them their own sunshine. Do not, do not stifle ambition. What's okay. a great story that relates to give them their own? Well, I'll tell you this. My brother Ronald was very helpful uh, in, in the Reagan uh, campaign. And he was offered a job in the Reagan ad administration, and which meant he had to leave Estee Lauder. Mm -hmm. and, and my mother said, why is he leaving Estee Lauder for government? He should be here. And my wife, Evelyn, turned to my mother and said, Be because he says he doesn't know he wants, he doesn't know if he's good. This is his opportunity to see whether he's good. And everyone needs their own sunshine. The best thing you can do yeah. is if you have people working with you, give them the sunshine. Don't take all the sunshine yourself. Let them experience the sunshine and they will they will support you forever. It's important. Sometimes when someone wants to try a new job or someone wants to try a new project, you have to just let them go on their merry way. I right. understand. Um, this is, I can't imagine the answer, so I'm excited to ask. Another notable question, Melissa Pekansky from Simrise, who's a senior fragrance development manager asked, what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment has been the people who have joined us from lowly jobs and grown and grown and grown and are running the company today. That's my greatest accomplishment. The people who are running SD Lauder. It's, a, it's the people. I love this one, which might be related to that, which is hire people who are smarter than you. Well, I'll tell you. When I went, I, I was I went to the to the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. I was a pretty smart kid, not the smart, but pretty smart. Pretty kid. smart. And uh, I think I'm number three in the class. I think. Uh, then I uh, then I went to Navy Officer Candidate School, and I was in a section of 24 men. Some were PhDs, some were this and that, and and in the section of 24 men, I was number 12. Whereas at Penn, at 750, I was, I think, number three or four. The people who were in my Officer Kentai School class were, half of them were all smarter than me. The first night when I discovered that, I felt a little uneasy, but then I said, hold it. If you get upset now, you'll never make it. The world is full of people who are smarter than you are. I made it a point to only hire people who had more talent than I did. It didn't mean higher grades. 
that meant more talent. If they were a better copywriter, I, I celebrated them. If they were better fragrance developers and better chemists, I celebrated them. I celebrated everyone who was better than I, than anyone else. You will always find people who are higher and better than you. Don't be threatened by them. Embrace them. Hmm. Why are people smarter than you? Okay, this is one that really touches my heart and I love, which is when you, one of your lessons is, have you told her you love her? People work for recognition. How does that benefit on the success of a business? Uh, firstly, in, in my own life, uh, every morning when I wake up, I turn to my wife, Judy, and say, will you marry me? <laughs> if I forget to say that one, one morning, she said, where's the question, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, you, you must tell her or him that you love them all the time. People need constant reminders that they are cherished and recognized by you. Don't assume that. Because uh, I, asked, uh, I asked once a man, have you said that to your wife? He said, she knows that I love her. Okay, when's the last time you told her that? Oh, she knows. When is the last time? Make sure you tell your husband or boyfriend or a girlfriend or all of them combined that you love them. And don't forget that. Wow. Um, Felix Meyer Harding from uh, Givadon asked the question. Dear Leonard, this is Felix Meyer Harding from Givadon. I want to give you a huge congratulations on the successful publication of your book and a huge thank you for being here today leading this masterclass, especially at a time when I'm sure you're extremely busy. Your generosity in sharing your experiences, in giving encouragement and a sense of purpose to the fragrance industry, in nurturing talents of all levels, is something that you give not only today in this masterclass, but also that shines out in your book and your actions. And I personally have benefited so much from that example. I see the boundless enthusiasm you show for both product and business. I see the kindness and the value that you give to all people. And I see the thoughtfulness and attention to detail you exhibit every day. And I am also inspired by your interest in the wider world. I shall never forget the talk that you gave collecting cubism on the bequest of your collection to the Met. And what stood out for me apart from your obvious incredible knowledge and love for, for the art, but it was the human interest you showed. For example, where on the walls of previous owners the paintings had hung, or as you put it, the psychology of how to prize them off the walls. You showed how much you cared about the human stories behind the artwork, as well as the artwork itself. And the same is the case in fragrance and business. You talk a lot in your book about the importance of family. And your concept of family includes all those in the Estee Lauder companies. And when I asked our team for their thoughts today, Michelle McCabe, who leads our Estee Lauder team, she said to me, you know, when I go to the, S to the GM building, sometimes you bump into Leonard in the elevator and he would see the Givadon bag and he always wanted to know who I was delivering to, what I was working on always engaging, always genuine, and with a good luck as he departed. And he makes me feel like part of the family, she said. So I want to thank you very, very much for the inspiration you give us all, for the example you set and for your time today. And my question to you is this, what qualities do you believe that successful leaders of the future are most going to need to have? And how may that be different from today? Uh, I believe that there's too much emphasis today on hard data. Mm. And, and people often let hard data 
overrule their experience and instinct. You have to be able to trust your experience and trust your instinct. Don't let that be overruled too much by hard data because there'll always be naysayers. Now, let me give, give you one uh, sort of along those same lines. I was out for dinner with my parents way back when, I think I was still in high school and, and they had their lawyer and their, and, and their accountant with them. The lawyer and the accountant was trying to convince them not to go into the cosmetic business because the, the mortality rate was too high. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, we'll, we're gonna do it anyway. They believed in their own wisdom and their own vision, even though they knew that the mortality rate in the cosmetic business was high then. Trust your instincts and trust your heart because your heart knows, as I mentioned before, what yeah. your head can barely comprehend. That's even related to this one lesson in the, in the section of the book. I love this quote where you say, ignore the anvil chorus. It's similar to many things you've been talking about today. If you have a good idea, go with it. Don't take a consensus, just go, go, go. Right. Is there any fragrance story that people were saying, well, maybe you shouldn't do this. And then you just went for it. Well, many of you know Karen Curry, who is head of our fragrance department for many years. She's tuned in today, I'm sure. Okay, if you're listening, Karen, Hello, and I, and I send you a hug and a kiss. Uh, we would have an intensive discussion before we launch a new fragrance. <clears throat> and here is the discussion. Karen, is this a good fragrance? Yes, it is, Leonard. Then launch it. End of conversation. You had because a lot. If you have someone that you trust Trust them. Don't try to second guess them. I trusted her implicitly all the time and it never ever backfired on me. Wow. Karen is a superstar. In my, listen, I owe her everything by the way. Karen, if you're listening, I owe you everything too. <laughs> Let's talk a little more about fragrance again. Your collection, many of your brands are sitting right behind me and um, we heard the story about youth do and beautiful. Yeah. And when I was actually at the Estee Lauder company um, was when you created relationships with others who had created their own fragrances. One was Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. One of them was Donna Karen. What was it like for you, Mr. Lauder, to go from those you created yourselves within the house to recognizing someone you wanted to have a partnership with. Yeah. What was your criteria and how does it feel when you do that? Either you trust them or you don't trust them. I trusted Tommy, okay. I trusted Donna, okay. I never tried to second guess someone who had already made the decision. And so that I didn't take one of their fragrances and put it out for test. If, if Tommy chose it, if Donna chose it, that's the choice for us. Great. No question. That's it. Over. And more recently, um, some of the brands within um, the big carousel of fragrances in the Estee Lauder companies are those who develop them pretty um, far. Like my one of my faves, you know, is Frederick Mall. Yeah. You gave the Game Changer Award to at the Fragrance Foundation. Right. Like in the first year, it was a thrilling moment. Um, Me too. What is it like to look at someone like Frederick or um, Tom Ford up there? He's also created an unbelievable collection and had, you have a big family now with a lot of children. Right. You love them all the same, I hope, in a certain way. Right. How does it feel differently to have a Frederick Mall or a Tom Ford or another one I have featured up here today, Mr. Killian? What's that like versus the license type agreement? Well, I'm trying to think uh, if there's any downside. I love them all. I know. I respect them all. Look, uh, where I'm sitting, I look up to each one of them. Not at them, not down at them. I look up to them. They were all creators in their own right. And because of that, they built a great business. So whoever they may, may be, 
in, in, their own, in their own worlds. I respect them and admire them for that. It's my job to make sure that they fly and get, and get the credit for all that they've done. That's my job. Well, it's a very big family now and all of them have their own personalities and they all have their own reasons to be, which are quite different yeah. from each other. So it, I, it, I don't think any of them are competing. I just feel like they're different children in the family. That's how it appears. Yeah, we don't have food fights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. I think it's um, pretty interesting though, how big the corporation has become. And tell us about the fragrance business in the US versus the rest of the world. Do you think fragrances are specific to a US customer? Or do you think all fragrances should be developed on a global basis? The answer is yes and no, okay? Yes. Uh, don't forget this, the US has probably the, is the largest multi-ethnic and multi-racial consumer, okay? Mm -hmm. So in France, uh, there, there's, there's a very uh, important uh, feeling of the, the, the Romanesque taste, okay? Just remember this, that if you try to develop a fragrance for the world, you develop it for no one except for yourself. And uh, uh, we had a situation some years ago where a decision was, was made without me, by the way, <laughs> that, uh, that we would have one formula for, for uh, everything, for, every, uh, for each thing, one formula for lipstick, one formula for this and that. It got us into trouble. That lasted for about 10 minutes. We, and so that, uh, uh, just, just remember that there are different ethnic groups and they re re respond to different fragrances in a, in a different way. To go back in time on that story, you were there, needless to say, when the Estee Lauder companies went international. Yeah. And from the book, I learned a lot from you that I hadn't really known had occurred back then. So when you went to different countries, did you think you needed to customize, you need to know what those people are about before you could really offer them the right products? What was that like? Well, the answer is yes or no. Uh, we knew that the UK taste, the English taste was pretty much like the American taste. Mm -hmm. So we launched Youth Do as our, as our lead fragrance and that, that helped us enormously. Uh, we knew also that the French taste was not only a French taste, however, they were very, uh, they looked down their noses at non-French fragrances. So we ha had to handle it in a different way. Uh, if I went through and told you each and every decision we made along the way, mm -hmm. we'd be together here until <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, and I just would like to ask you, what would you like to have for breakfast with me tomorrow? <laughs> I think some scrambled eggs would be good. Okay, scrambled eggs are fun. Yeah. Egg okay. white or whole egg? Whatever you have. Okay. I'm open. Yeah. I'll, I'll, but I'll have what she's having, please. Thanks. Let's go into one other um, area, which is how fragrance makes people feel. You know, prior to this pandemic, I didn't light a candle. I was very, I don't know, it wasn't really my thing. And now every single night when we have dinner, as I call it, Chez Nu, over there at the dining room table, um, I love to light a candle. So for me, and it's not just me, for many consumers staying home or being more restricted has created more of a discovery process, don't you think, of what fragrance means to them and what fragrance will be going forward. What have you observed in this way during the pandemic? I love what you have to say. People love to eat dinner at home. And uh, since we now have to social distance and can't have a big dinner party, our favorite means of, edgy, of dining is Judy and I with one of the couple. Mm. And it's terrific. It is. Big, you don't have to think about turning the table because there's no table to turn. You look at each other. And uh, I learned so much from so many friends 
by narrowing our focus on just the people at the table. However, uh, I have a lifetime of friends and I now am, uh, have to reach out to people around the world who, have, who are, are my friends. And uh, I got a call, a telephone call this morning from an old friend of mine who I, who I met about 50 or 60 years ago, mm -hmm. who lives in, uh, uh, near, near Marseille in France. Yes. And uh, so we had a long conversation. And then because I just had my left knee replaced, he put his wife on the phone because she just had her knee replaced. And I gave her advice as to how to take care of her knee. Is your knee okay? Funny you should ask. When I was probably 20 years old, I had a bad knee and it was before the arthroscopic surgery. So I yeah. have knee issues too. If I ever need a knee replacement, I'll be giving you a buzz, Mr. Lauder. Call me. I, I, can, I, I, <laughs> I, won't be able to, I won't be able to put on my screw-ups to do it, but I'll give you advice. Yeah. So are you saying, I think a lot of us have found, instead of it being a lost year, and it's certainly been a challenging year, the quality of relationships and how you communicate with people has changed. I am sure that you and Judy were going out in New York City or wherever you were almost every night. And now it's a duo or it's, it sounds yeah. like a double date. We love being home uh, with a double date, maybe just, just the two of us and or with a family member. Uh, right now, it's the two of us plus my grandson, Joshua, who uh -huh. was here from uh, the two, uh, He's living in Hong Kong right now, but he came here. And uh, the level of conversation is far more intimate, intimate and, 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 and forming. And I learned a lot from that. So yeah, quality, not quantity. Yeah, right. what, are, what is it that you most miss um, during this? Because if we're lucky, Mr. Lauder, I think by the time we get to next fall, we'll be much more out and about. Yeah, well, what I most miss is being in the office, walking down the hallway, sticking my head in the, in the door, say hi, and what are you working on? Then hello there, et cetera. I miss seeing people, seeing all the people. And uh, I love hearing about them and what's happening in their family, et cetera. And, uh, and so, so that uh, it's no fun just hearing them on the phone. It's true. Well, Zoom is a bit of an addiction and sometimes it's a bit too much, but at yeah. least, you know, we get to see you today. So well, I get to see you too. That's, that's my pleasure. What, I, what shade of lipstick are you wearing? I'm glad you asked. I'm wearing Tom, it's a combo, Tom Ford Casablanca. Yeah. And some other red, you know, it's never just one lipstick with me. It's sort of a combo at all times. I particularly like also Killian has created perfumed lipsticks. So, I know that. And it's hugely successful. They're magnificent, yeah, just yeah. magnificent. Yeah. I think lipstick is having a tough time behind the mask, but uh, yeah. you can see I wouldn't even- Lipstick will be back. Yeah. Lipstick will be back, but so will fragrance. I know it will. What, do you have any thoughts about one, anything else about life lessons to our friends out there, because Mr. Lord, the, here's a positive of this pandemic. These, ver usually we'd have an event and people would buy tickets and they'd have to put time on their calendar and they'd have to get there and then they'd go back and it would be like a whole production. This webinar today is you know, gonna be watched by thousands of people around the world, but I know there's one part of the audience that you're gonna have something to say to, because I learned it when we've done prior webinars. I'm very excited to know that people who actually sell fragrance in a Macy's, in a Dillard's, in a Belk, in a Sephora, in a Saks, in, in an Ulta, wherever, those are the people who are really taking advantage of moments like this and they would never get to see you like this. Yeah. And I know you love going into the stores. So let's have a fantasy moment as part of our wrap up. If you were to be able to talk to the people out there who are selling fragrance, who could learn so much from you. What do you think it's gonna be like when the doors open up again and people come back into the store? It will happen. Well, I should answer that, but let me flip it. Okay. What I, what I do miss is going into the stores and learning 
rather than, I, I, I do talk and do teach, but learning. But there are small little things you can learn by listening to them. Now, in the mass business, people call it store checks. Yeah. I don't do store checks. I, don't, I, I know that in your PNG background, that's mm -hmm. what you did, okay? Uh, I don't do store checks. I go in to listen and to learn. And I never leave, I never leave a store without having a two or three pages full of notes from what people have told me. If you want to succeed in today's and tomorrow's market, learn to listen and to hear what people are saying. Now, one other little thought, please. Yes. Uh, one of the things that I've found is that most people don't really know how to listen. If you have a meeting, if I have a meeting with five or six people and we've made a decision on doing something, I will say, now let's review the bidding. What did we decide on doing? I'll have five different answers. Even though, even though we were all sitting in the same room mm -hmm. and didn't leave. People hear what they want to hear. Open, learn to open up your ears and your heart and your mind to what other people are saying to you. And, and if, if you can do that on a regular basis, I promise you, you will always win. That's a guarantee. I will love a guarantee. You've taught us a lot today, Mr. Lauder. Listening is really, really important. And we're gonna probably wrap it with that. Um, I cannot thank you enough. Everyone is so excited, you know, because at a time like this where you know what this means, besides the fact that we're all home, you and I have shared a lot of times as we're heading into the holiday season. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's going to be Christmas 10 days after uh, we have this discussion and people are still going to be celebrating. So I think you've given them a reason to stop and pause and your words of wisdom mean the most to us. And I cannot tell you how excited we are between Christmas and New Year's to reread your book, The Company mm -hmm. I How did you come up with that name? That's my last question. Well, uh, the, I, I, I had worked with, with, uh, with, a, with a writer. Uh, she and I would work together twice a week for a, a, a half a day. Yeah. And we came up, and she came up with, with two or three titles. That's what I like. Now, before we leave. Yes. Uh, a commercial. Sure. O over your, is it your right shoulder? This Where way? the book is? Yeah. Yep. Over your right shoulder is a book. The company I can. And bring it to the screen. It's a nice picture of you too, sir. Okay. There Please you. buy the book. Now I don't get, I don't get royalties, but all the money that comes in goes to charity. And oh. uh, I'm not allowed to say which ones, but I think you can all guess which one, okay? And then look over, look over your head and you see there is beautiful. And then in the middle is youth to bath oil. Yep. Now, do you know what I, made me fall in love and still in love with my, my second wife, Judy? Wow. Because my late wife, Evelyn, passed away. She is an avid user of youth to. Try it again and see what it will do to your love life. Now, just remember this. Don't forget, I love you. Say, I, I love you when I you love come you. home tonight. I don't care who you say I love you to, even, even the elevator man. <laughs> Recognize someone. Give well, them respect. Mr. Lauder, I actually sprayed on you through before we started this conversation. It will continue through the Shainu dinner. And okay. I'll let you know what Steve's reaction is to it because I haven't had it on my rotation recently. Okay, I'm so may I quote my mother on one last thing? Yeah. When sex goes out of business, so will we. Okay? <laughs> That's a great Remember that, line. Linda? Mr. Lauder, I can't help it. I'm sending you big smooches I'm today. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. We love you, and it was wonderful spending this time with you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. And to all of you who are listening and watching, I send you my very best wishes for a happy holiday season. 
stay healthy, no kissing, no breathing in the wrong places, just stay healthy and alive. It's the most important thing. Stay well. We look forward to seeing you in person soon. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all for joining us today. I am certain that you enjoyed this conversation with Leonard Lauder as much as I did. If for any reason you want to hear it again, we will be putting it on the Fragrance Foundation website um, shortly after just today. But I do want to say that even though I read the book and even though I heard a lot from Mr. Lauder today, there's not anything that compares to learning from an icon such as himself. He's not just a businessman. He's a fabulous human being who really inspires us. This is a very difficult time. We're all going to stay home, stay safe, travel safely, and do everything we can to maintain the best possible situation. Because at the end of this pandemic, and as we go back into the real world again, we're going to be really so much more appreciative of everything that we have. Before I leave, I do have to say that I am happy that I'm sharing this with all of you. But for the reason I enjoyed it so much is because I've actually read The Company I Keep by Leonard Lauder. I truly encourage you for Hanukkah, for Christmas, for the new year, or for whatever, buy this book and read this book. There is so much to learn and might as well give it to everyone you know in your life as a present. Tis the season, you know. Um, That's right after you buy some fragrance, of course. So thank you for joining us today. We loved having you with us. And we will see you again in 2021. Happy New Year to everyone.